I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome, everybody, to another edition of the Home Cook Food Cast. I am Alex Paris, your host, filling in for Lennon Vergara as he cannot make it out at this time, but we're still going to have a great time over here, aren't we, guys? Yes. yes. And as you can see, we got our wonderful co host. We got David St. Dennis right over here. Hello, everybody. We got Christian, aka Gunshot. Yo, yeah, what up? And we got Luke Jeffers. Oh, guys, as I'm um, getting ready to get ready to go to sleep, like around um, an, an hour and a half from now. Yes, it is currently. Uh, 5 or 6 p.m. I gotta look up something real quick. And it's 8 or 6 my time. Same here. And it's 5 or 6 at my time as we are recording this. Today, since 4th of July is coming up, we're gonna be talking about the food and the drinks, the history and the facts. As facts I'm looking over, over here. Facts over feelings. Not that exactly. one. And of course, the fun. So we are going to be talking about as our first topic. I am going to be sharing the screen over here. And we are going to be talking about the role of chickpeas at the festival right over here. Salty and sweet. The role of chickpeas at the festival meal of Ahmed al Badri in the Egyptian Delta in the 1850s to the 1890s. Every October since the death of Moroccan-born mystic Ahmad al Badri Devotees travel from all over Afro Eurasia seeking blessings from the saint during the Grand Mule Fair. His body rests in the central Egyptian Delta City, Tanta. When visitors arrive, the markets that surrounded his mosque and tomb greet them with the fragments of sweets, ranging from balsa, honey, candy, shahar, and savory treats such as nuts, seeds, chickpeas. These sweets are, sp and specifically chickpeas, hummus have come to connote joy and blessings from the saint and the festives that surround the event. This article will explore the ways that devotees and pilgrims used hummus to consume the saint's blessing, Barca, during the second half of the 19th century and argued that hummus, representing a cultural aspect of the relationship between the devotees and saint, provide insight into the Egyptian Delta cosmology during the 19th century. All right, the next one I want to talk about is this as i am gonna stop screen sharing over here and switch into the next one we're gonna be talking about the kitchen in history and we're gonna have mr saint dennis read this all right <clears throat> food and the home are essential to the lived reality of people both historically and and present presently those Thus, uh, the, excuse me, those the monks' uh, kitchens. Uh, oh, those are small to read. Um, okay, that's better. That's better. Um, okay, where do I that? Okay, our, huh, there we go. As spaces within the home in which food is cooked and prepared for consumption by the household, our food sites of sites, yes, food sites, and of analysts for examining historic experience and ideology. All right, uh, who wants to read to this next paragraph here? Luke, would you like to read this next paragraph? Yes. Uh, All right. This kitchen within the home holds a multiple of, of I can't pronounce this word. Significance says. Uh, significance I pronounce it. Okay. It's a sign of um, consummation, combination, consumption. Consumption, mm. conversation, and techno hypnosis. Mm. 
Technological innovation. Okay, technological technological innovation. Okay. Here you go, Luke. Okay, thank you. The the kitchen to be a food um with uh, overlapping and sometimes tragic hypnosis. Mm. Tragic. Oh, okay. Contradictory. Contradictory. Okay, thank you. Means uh, that span uh, from familial and emotional to partial and natural, indeed, while uh, referring to the kitchen that with the fine, uh, the fine how I pronounce it, article is uh, convenient. Convenient. Okay, thank you. It's also a uh, um, a more um, complex historical truth. The kitchen is not always a single separate room in the private home, as both articles in a special session are addressed, which what a kitchen uh, is and what it means, but it bounds up to the particle time and place. Um, uh, is there any way you can make the screen a little bigger? All right, that's perfect. Yeah. Uh, uh, so I'm a little bit difficult to read in this name. That's not here. <laughs> um, how do you say that? Claudia Kreklau. Thank you. Uh, Chris, I'll make it to the understanding of the understanding of how class aid into the kitchen. That seen from the dissertation of Jensen's kitchen and Jensen's ability what a kitchen actually is. Jensen showed that the difference if the kitchen was rooms and ideas of class and states of what ways and place which which kitchens and just so with a little in place the kitchen made space of several rooms and homes. Homes would likely be a room on the ground floor. At the lower end of the social spectrum in, in a working home, it might only be a small area in a room with multiple functions. Furthermore, Krek Lau's article mm. considers how this class speci specifically in the type of kitchen impacted how they were gendered. Royal kitchens, for instance, were typically staffed with male chefs who had better pay and opportunities than their female colleagues. Cracklow argues that the social consumption of a single room kitchen associated with women was not well established until around 1900 and diverged from the cultural dominance of the middling classes and their fail male fantasies of female domes domesticacy. And in all, this article refreshingly unpicks and questions the familiar idea of the feminine kitchen and draws the attention to the need of, for an awareness of class specifically of, and how domestic spaces are gendered. No need to read the whole article here, but uh, that's pretty much how the uh, kit the history of the kitchen is. Yeah. Kind of All right. Up. Next, we are going to be talking about twenty-one legitimately interesting food facts you should know. You learn something new every day, right? Peaches and nectarines are essentially the same fruit. I did not know that. They're nearly genetically identical except for one thing, a gene that is either dominant in peaches or recessive in nectarines. That's what determines whether the skin is fuzzy or smooth. McDonald's fries were cooked in beef fat until 1990. But in an effort to seem, make it healthier, they are now cooked in vegetable oil. Glass gem corn exists with pretty colors. Wow. Oklahoma farmer Carl Barnes spent years selectively breeding the colorful corn as a way to reconnect with his heritage. Now anyone can buy and plant the multicolored cobs. Fruit salad trees exist too. These multi-grafted trees were developed in Australia to grow up to six different types of fruit on one tree. German chocolate cake didn't originate in Germany. It's just called that because of Sam German, a guy who invented a kind of baking chocolate. The first published recipe for German's chocolate cake was actually written by a Texas homemaker. And Hawaiian people didn't come from Hawaii at all. No, it did not. 
It was actually invented in Canada. Wow. Otis Thank Spookfire you. is a combination of the names of the football player Otis Sistrunk and popcorn maker Orville Rentbacker. The name was thought up by company food Ken Rawlings' 12-year-old daughter. And Spam is a mashup of the words spice and ham, which I actually did not know of all the years I've ate Spam. Yeah, I didn't know either. That's actually cool. It's really cool. And it's wrote, not, uh, as I an urban like legend would say, hold on. Scientifically processed animal matter. Go ahead. Mm. Uh, but uh, as I was saying, a lot of people think spam's gross, but I actually think it's pretty good. It's really good. Most speaking of, probably, speaking of, sorry, I'm up, uh, speaking of Canada, we all know who lives in Canada. This Andrew guy. Andrew Hawking, naturally stoned. All right, most wasabi is horseradish that's dyed green. Real, real wasabi is difficult to grow, very expensive, and should be consumed within 15 minutes of being grated. On Sesame yeah. Street, Cookie Monsters cookies are actually painted rice cakes. That's because the grease from the chocolate and oil real cookies could damage the puppets. Yeah. And pineapples can take two to three years to grow. It's a Ooh. long process. The next time you grab one at the grocery store, think about how far the thing has come. That's crazy. In 2018, that Butterfinger changed its recipe. They reworked the chocolate mixture, among other things. But worth noting, some people really hated the new version. I like the old Butterfinger. Mm -hmm. I still like Butterfinger, but I just remember the old recipe. Yeah, I'm allergic. Unfortunately, and that's true. You can't have peanuts or anything like that. Yeah, I'm allergic, yeah. Girl Scout cookies aren't consistent across the board. They're made by two distinct distinct bakeries. That means the cookies are slightly different and are sold under dual names, like Samoa's versus Caramel Delights and Shortbread versus Trifoils. Find a complete rundown of differences and which ones your state is getting here. Too much nutmeg can get you high. Really? So if you like <laughs> getting high on 420, folks, get some nutmeg if you can't afford cannabis. Oh, yeah. You can't get weed. There you go. There you go. Get the nutmeg. I didn't know that. That's wow. Me yeah. too. It's a compound that has hallucinatory qualities and brutal side effects if ingested at very large doses. So please do not try this at home or don't yeah. do it at all where, wherever you're at. Cashews grow on <laughs> cashew apples. Cashew apples are edible, but better used in juices, jams, chutneys, and since the flesh is bitter. We'll let Luke read know. this one right here. Okay, 16, okay. Before he famous for his cookie recipe, Wally Amos was a tower agent who discovered some pretty big names, okay? He signed Sam, Simon uh, Car Carfunkel. Yeah, I, I got it right. Okay. But back in the day, and rap uh, kinds, um, including Diane Ross and Marvin Gaye. Okay. I did not even know that. I had famous animals. They're really good cookies. Yeah. Yeah, they are. They're here. Cilantro and Frisk Coordinator are the same thing. David. Can you make him up a bit of a for him? Okay, there are just two different names to describe the plant, the same plant. There are also coordinator seeds, which came from the plant too. And you can find them whole, whole or ground up into species. Spices. Spices. Yeah. Christian. Um, I have more vitamin C than any than the Oranges? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, sorry, then as much as horses on the corn, the color of the pepper. Sorry, About two or three times as much, depending on the color of the pepper. All right. In 2018, 
Nabisco redesigned its iconic animal crackers after PETA flagged it. Yes. It used to they used to be in cages, but in 2018 they changed the design like this so they can be free. Wow. I haven't had animal oh, wow. crackers in, in a long time. I used to have those when I was a kid too. Same here. Yeah, I've not had those in a long time either. Lemons float, but limes sink. I was thinking that limes would float too, but I guess lime has more dense than lemon does. It all comes down to density. Like I said, limes are slightly denser than lemons. Hmm. A single no, spaghetti no, noodle no, is called. Sorry, before you continue, um, can I just can I just say that uh, the picture of that drink that they got for that that doesn't look very good. That kind of looks gross. <laughs> <laughs> kind of looks a little weird. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And sorry, go See? on. Continue. And number twenty-one, a single spaghetti noodle is called a spaghetti, a spaghetto, not spaghettio, spaghetto. LOL. Mm. And yeah. that concludes the twenty-one interesting food facts that you should know. Okay. Very interesting. Very. Very interesting. Now we're going to look at the 30 outrageous facts about food you think are made up. And then we're going to be talking about the some of my favorite drinks and other drinks as well. The history, the facts, and the fun. 30 <laughs> outrageous facts about food you think are made up. Do you believe these utterly insane food facts? Number one, the most popular pizza topping isn't what you think. Cheese pizza is a classic, but, the, but despite popular belief, it isn't actually the most popular pizza topping. Instead, the honor belongs to pepperoni, followed by mushrooms, onions, and sausage, according to Foodler. I, I knew pepperoni would be the number one topping. Number two, we have... What? I said, of course, pepperoni is delicious. Yes. Yeah, same here with mine. I had pizza last night. Yeah, I'm and, uh, last Americans eat nearly two thousand pounds of food a year. You're probably thinking, "There's no way I eat two thousand pounds of food in a year." <laughs> but according to Jesus economics Christ. at the USDA, it's just four pounds short of what the average American consumed in 2011. Of those, only 273 pounds consumed were fruit. 415 were veggies. So excuse us while we increase the intake of our, of our leafy greens. Excuse me. When Oreo cookies pizza? are not vegan. Huh? Wow. When did you get pizza? From your pizza factory. Uh, David. Yeah. Let me see. Despite the number that's been flying around for the past few years, America's favorite cookie is an act so you bake and prune, according to Oreo. Uh, while milk and eggs are listed on the ingredient list, the cookies could uh, possibly come into contact with milk during product production, and therefore should be avoided by vegans here or not there. Surprise the foods you should serve. Serve a vegan. Christian. Oh, Cheerios. Hmm? <coughs> Fruit Loops. Yes. Christian. Christian. I can't hear him. It's your turn. Oh, yeah, sorry, my connection went out. Second, because somebody tried to call me. Anyway, let me get to reading this. Uh, Fruit Loop. Hold on one moment. Uh, could you make the screen a little bigger, please? Yes. All right, that will do. Thank you. Sorry about that. Somebody tried to call me. Uh, Fruit Loops all are the same flavor. Huh. If you more than just. Oh my lord, what the hell? Uh. Oh, it's, it's, Hold on, give me a moment. If you're wondering if right. is, is needing having the place for a fruit, and after all the 
of Fruit Loops and Wait Real Estate and they all are traced the same. They actually are a first place of our first so uh favored and subscribe to them the what's that last I got it. I'll read this. I'll read this. Christian, I'll read this. If you think your palate is so refined to, as to notice a distinct flavor in each of the all differently colored Fruit Loops, we're sorry to break it to you. They all taste the same. They're actually a blend of fruit flavors. So no flavor is not more noticeable than the rest. Okay. Wine can be used to fuel a car? What? What? Luke. Wait, what? Oh, man. Don't try this wine at home. It's an effort to just find a uh, soup. I can't pronounce it. Sustainable. Sustainable. Okay, thank you. Our native uh, to traditional oil. Prince Charles has been as his vintage uh, Asian, um, a son, Martin, um, uh, Bridge uh, to run uh, on wine uh, and claims that uh, it's run better than more powerful for the uh, wall and the uh, spirit. Plus, it smells better while I was driving too, as well. Okay. This supplies an alcoholic beverage is the fastest growing you last. Oh, geez. Watermelons are berries, but strawberries aren't. Common sense that fruits with the word berry are. The name are chorus berries, but that's not exactly the case. Since the word scientific definition means a berry must have an outer skin, a fleshly middle, and seeds on the inside, not on the outside. So strawberries don't make the cut, but watermelons and bananas do. I'll read the rest of it if that's okay with you guys. That's fine. Sure thing. Yeah, sorry, bar I'm, goes so I'm fast. Difficult to read today. I apologize. What? Anyways. Oh, I apologize. I'm having a bit of difficulty reading today, so I do apologize. For that. It's all right. Rhubarb has the ability to grow as much as one inch per day. It rates so fast you can actually hear it creak and pop as it gets bigger. Scientists say that growing forced rhubarb makes it sweeter, which is why the stalky plant stars in so many of our favorite spring and summer dishes. Shaking ketchup changes on a molecule level. If you're sick of the Goopy ketchup that barely makes it out of the bottle. There's a simple solution. Shake it. Just like what I do with ketchup and mustard. Shaking ketchup turns around turns round tomato particles into a thinner ellipsis shape, making it 1,000 times runnier and the perfect consistency for squirting onto fries, burgers, and all your favorite meals. Wow. Even hot dogs, too. Even hot dogs, too. Yeah. The chicken manga was invented in America. I never heard of this. The chicken Shanga is among to go choices when dining at Mexican restaurants, but it turns out it's not completely Mexican at all. It was most likely invented in a Mexican restaurant in Tuscan, Arizona, and translate from Spanish as whatchamacallit or thingamajig. Here are some of our favorite Tex Mex recipes bursting with the Southwestern flavor. Sesame seeds were believed to hold magical properties. We all love a few sesame seeds sprinkled on burger buns. But did you know they were once worth more than gold? While there's no de denying that sesame seeds offer many health benefits, in some cultures of old they were considered to bring good luck and fortune, and thus were one of the most valuable items on earth. Mm -hmm. Banana flavoring isn't based on real bananas. Have you ever bitten into a banana-flavored candy, only to notice that it doesn't exactly taste like the real thing? You're not alone. There's a theory that banana flavoring was based on the extinct gross my McChell variety of banana. Though it's no longer commercially grown, we likely never know. Use real bananas in these banana bread recipes. Sliced bread was banned by the FDA. Really? Back in 1928, machine sliced bread was first introduced, changing the world as we knew it. But only 15 years later, in 43, it was banned by the FDA for using too much plastic that could be used for the war effort instead. The ban only lasted three months, though, as the public outcry was caused it was too great. Why would they ban bread? Wow, yeah. More people die by falling coconuts than sharks. 
Sharks get a bad rap, but in reality, wow. you're much more likely to be finished by a coconut than the aquatic predator. Each year, about 150 people are killed by fallen coconuts compared to only 10 by sharks. Show coconuts who's boss by devouring them than these coconut recipes. You can taste garlic with your feet. Really? What? That's, that's disgusting. Give me a minute. I'm going to lift my fan over here a little bit. This one. There we go. Garlic's pungent smell can be attributed to a chemical called allicin. This is so powerful that it can be absorbed through your skin and into your bloodstream, reaching all the way up to your mouth and nose, where you'll feel like you're tasting it. But if you rather just eat it, here are our best tips for roasting garlic. I want to get into uh, drinking, so we're going to just read the topic here. The baseline, whatever. Lobster was once considered only the fit to serve the prisoners. Hmm. Interesting. Number 16, humans share 60% of our DNA with bananas. As it turns out, humans aren't as unique as we thought we were. Yeah. Mountain Dew is made out of orange juice. Wow. Really? I didn't know well, that is a one. That's it cool. is a citrus. Hold on. It is a citrus uh, drink, after all. Go ahead, Christian. Oh, I said I didn't know that. That's cool. Mountain Dew is actually made out of orange juice. Me too. Number 18 out of 30. Fritos are made with only three ingredients. Corn, mm -hmm. corn soil, and salt. Number 19. Scientists can turn peanut butter into diamonds. Wow, that surprises me. So... If you got a lot of peanut butter and you know how to turn them into diamonds, you could be rich really fast. Number 20, Pizza Hut was once America's largest purchaser of kale. Number 21, until 2011, Russia classified beer as a soft drink. <laughs> Those Russians. Yeah. Number 22, there's a black market for cheese. Number 23, Ross pistachios can spontaneously combust, meaning explode. Really? Yeah. Fruit snacks and cars are coated in the same wax. What? Carnuba wax. Disgusting. <laughs> so we're oh, eating yeah. car wax? <laughs> oh, my God. No, I don't think it's... Uh... Wow. I don't want fruit snacks anymore. Mushrooms are pretty much impossible to overcook. Nutella uses 25% of the world's hazelnuts. They're, oh. <laughs> and corned beef sandwich was smuggled into space. Hmm. And number 28, white chocolate isn't actually chocolate. It's a mix of sugar, cocoa butter, milk products, vanilla, and lecithin. Ripe cranberries bounce like bouncy balls. Ooh. Wow. And finally, potatoes can improve Wi-Fi signals? Signals. What? Really? All right. So that concludes the history of food, facts, and the fun. Yeah. Now we're going to be talking about the history of drinks, the facts, and the and the fun. Mm -hmm. We're going to start off with a brief history of alcohol and alcoholic beverages. Well, this is fun, and I was making a mistake on this video. Whatever you say, David, whatever you say. Exactly. Fermented grain, <laughs> fruit juice, and honey have been used to make alcohol for thousands of years. Luke. Okay, I'll sit down. Anyway, fermented uh, beverage uh, existed in the early e Egyptian um, civilization. In there, huh? Go ahead. Okay, and there is a evidence of an early alcohol drink in China around 7,000 BC in India, an alcoholic beverage uh, 
called Sura to steal the rise from what was it used between 3000 and 2000 BC. Oh, God. The Babylonians worshipped an Hawaiian goddess as early as 2700 BC. In Greece, one of the first alcoholic beverages to gain popularity was a mead, a fermented drink made from honey and water. Greek literature is full of warnings against excessive drinking. David. On this uh, message, can you, uh, can you continue? That's okay. Yeah, sure. Several Native American civilizations developed alcoholic beverages in the pre-Columbian times. In pre-Columbian times, a variety of fermented beverages from the Andes region of South America were created from corn, grapes, or apples called chica. Do you want to read this, Christian? Uh, yes, yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, okay. What is wrong with me today? Just, uh, if you don't want to read uh, today, you, you can just be an audience participant if you want to. Yeah, no, I'm just watching. I'm having difficulty reading today. I think it's from work. Trust me out today. Dad, sorry. I apologize. So do you Come just want to sit back and relax? It's up to you. Yeah, I'll sit back and watch the screen. Uh, All right. I'll, you guys. I'll sit back and watch the You guys can do the reading. All I right. do apologize. It's Good okay. Fine. In the 16th century, alcohol called spirits was used largely for medicinal purposes. At the beginning of the 18th century, the British Parliament passed a law encouraging the use of grain for distilling spirits. Cheap spirits flooded the market and reached a peak in the mid-18th century. In Britain, gin consumption reached 18 million gallons and alcoholism before it became widespread. The 19th century brought a change in attitudes and the temperance movement began promoting the moderate use of alcohol, which ultimately became a push for total prohibit prohibition. Luke. Oh, you're at, you're at the 19th one century part, not the... I know, that's 20th. yours. Okay. In the 19th century, brought the change in attitudes. The in the temperature movement began plummeting. The the moderate the use of alcohol was ultimately ultimately uh happened now. It became a ultimately. push for ultimately okay pfft, became a push for total prohibition. In 1920, the United States passed a law prohibiting the manufacture, sale, import, and export of intoxicating liquors. The illegal alcohol trade boomed, and by 1933, the prohibition of alcohol was canceled. Prohibition. Today, an estimated 15 million Americans suffer from alcoholism, and 40% of all car accidents in the U.S. involve alcohol. And I will say this, don't ever drink and drive. If you're going to drink, yeah. get a ride from a friend or get a taxi or Uber or Lyft, whatever. Exactly. Yeah, and exactly. every 15 minutes, somebody dies from a drunk driving relate. Drunk. Mm -hmm. Every 15 minutes, somebody dies from drunk driving. And that's yeah. a fact. Nine years ago at my high school, we had that little program where they recreate a scene of teenagers getting get cra they crash into a car. You get the idea. Yeah, you get the idea. I'm sorry I was being silly in this while I was doing something it's all right we're all having a good time <laughs> yes but still um yeah earlier while i was doing the um this video i was just playing back the old thing seen here I, it, while you're doing this drinks thing i'll read these yeah. four art par paragraphs here of the history of drinks okay would you like to read this first one david I'll make I'll, it I'll, bigger for you. Huh? I'll have you read it. All right. Thank you very much. The original drink was, of course, water or Adam's Ale, as it's sometimes called. However, when people invented farming, they invented other drinks. It is believed that beer was invented before writing. Certainly in Egypt, beer was a common drink. People drank it from large containers through straws to avoid drinking debris floating in the drink. In Northern Europe, the Celts also drank beer. After the Romans conquered Britain and brewing continued, 
In ancient Middle East, wine was also a common drink. It was drunk by 4,000 BC. You want me to read the whole mm -hmm. thing, David, you were saying? Yeah. All right. If that's okay with you guys. Yeah. All right. All right. Thank you very much. In the Middle Ages, ordinary people often drank ale. Other drinks included cider and mead. Wine was the drink of the wealthy, as it was imported from France and Germany, and so it was expensive. Wine was also imported from the Middle East, uh, Eastern Mediterranean. It was called Mamsley Wine, which is a corruption of Minovizia, a town famous for its wine. The origins of vodka are lost in the midst of time, but it's believed it was first made in Eastern Europe during the Middle Ages. The Mongols invented lemonade. It was first recorded in 1299. 12, 12, in the 16th century, people often drank ale or beer. Young children drank milk, which everybody still does. Most people. Water was often too dirty to drink. People only drank it as if it came from a pure source. And now we're going to be talking about a couple soft drinks. We're going to start off with my, one of my favorite ones, Surge. Now, of course, it's not just a sudden or powerful <laughs> forward or upward movement, of course. We're talking about the soft drink, Surge. Surge is a citrus-flavored soft drink first released in 1997 to compete with Pepsi's Mountain Dew. It was advertised as a more hardcore edge, more like Mountain Dew, and it was they had a code name Mountain Dew Killer or MDK. It was originally launched in Norway as Urge in 1996, and it was so popular it was released in the U.S. in '97, like I said. But however, in 2000, by 2003, due to lagging sales, they discontinued the drink. However, popular fan bases such as Facebook Surge Movement led Coca-Cola to release the soft drink once again as an Amazon exclusive on September 15, 2014. And 12 packs of 16 flu and ounce cans. Following a test market for the beverage in the southeastern United States in 2015, early 2015, it was re-released primarily in the convenience stores in the east portion of the United States and some mountain states in 2015. Surge were re-released internationally in September 2018 at Burger King restaurants if they had the freestyle machine. Now I did hear that they're gonna get stop selling surge at the shelves pretty soon unfortunately but you could still get them at your local burger king if they had the freestyle machine all right in 1997 coca-cola started production of surge in the united states which its original white paper being mdk or mountain dew killer as i explained earlier it was developed to converge with oh who's let's see who we got here thought i heard something oh that was just luke i thought i heard somebody else yeah. Yeah, Morgan told me that, that he's going to spend his time with me, and then uh, in, the, in the moment, my mom's going to fix my bed and everything. All right, that's so that's totally fine. It was developed to converge with Melio as a means of slowing Mountain Dew's growth. Coke attempts to draw users away with divergent products like OK Solo with no some similar ones like Melio had not succeeded. <laughs> Excuse me. Surge was intended to improve on Mountain Dew by using meth, whatever that is, for a longer lasting blast of energy and with bolder prior presentation. Its release was accompanied by a $50 million nationwide marketing campaign that led to high sales and popularity. As you can see, all those commercials where they were raced to get the bottle of Surge. And then in 1999, they changed their they changed their branding to a little bit more of a I'll show it to you later on. That's the 90s and the current logo. I'll show you a picture of Surge later on. Excuse me. Now, Coca-Cola was sued by a, not, by a different company for use because it claimed it owned the name Surge many, many years ago, according to a video I saw on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It settled a trademark dispute with Babson Brothers, an industrial cleaning product company whose cow milking machine has been known as Surge since 1925. After we got to continue in 2003, the, as I said, there's been many fans that want to bring back Surge, and there was something similar called Vault, and it got to continue in 2011. Here it is over here. Eric Carr, 
called the, called the Facebook page The Surge Movement. The group repeatedly posted requests on Coca-Cola's Facebook page and encouraged its members to call Coca-Cola's Consumer Affairs Hotline right over here to voice their desires further once every month. It had 200,000 Facebook likes in the months after it was started and continues to grow to this day. Okay. As you can see over here on February, it's announced test marketing in the surge. And there's slushy versions too. In 2015, November 16th, they released a slushy version at Burger King called Frozen Sewage, which was for a limited time. In late 2016, wow. Valero Corner Stores partnered with Icy to release an icy form of Surge. And Cinemark wow. Theaters released a slushy version called Surge Frozen for a limited time before being discontinued in 2018. Not the movie. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Here is the formulation of what it contained. These were the ones, Surge cans and bottles. 2006, huh? Yeah, that's what... And the fountain syrup right over here. And here's the 2015. As you can see, it's slightly a little different than the original one, but Surge is still good to this day. Wow. And I think it's time for a little bit of an open forum since it's the 4th of July. Wow. Yes. So we're going to start off with Christian since he's one of the co-hosts. What are your plans for the 4th of July? Well, before I get started, um, I would like to apologize for interrupting you a lot and uh, not being able to read on this, on this, sh not being able to read, right? <laughs> I had a very stressful day at work, so I do apologize for that. Um, uh, moving past Fine. that now, um, I'm actually going to the barbecue. I'm going to the barbecue. I'm That's what we're going to be doing, too. July. That's what we're going to be doing, too. We're just yeah, going to barbecue. It's going to be a cool, uh, Is that it? Yeah, one of my uh, one of my uncles uh, bought a new house that has a that has a pool, so we're having a barbecue at his house and he gets a pool, so uh, it's gonna be a fun barbecue. Very cool. That's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have a couple family members over for our Fourth of July plans. Just barbecue, no fireworks, cause California, like California, they're gonna be like doing what zero tolerance crackdowns on fireworks. All that stuff. David, what are your plans for Independence Day? Well, uh, I'll go to my relatives. Uh, you know, I did do it last year because you know, I don't know why, but uh, I'll be going to my relatives. I'm not, um, it said Sunday, but however, it is raining like a lot this weekend uh, according to the weather, so uh, I actually can hear Ring right now. Uh, so I'm not quite someone exactly, but it's going to happen soon. Is it raining me. down there? Yes, uh, I don't know if you can hear it, but. I cannot I hear, hear it, but I can. I believe you. It's sunny over yeah. here, but the state of California is under a probably, possibly an exceptional drought. I haven't checked the drought monitor website, but I can assume it's an exceptional drought. When was the last time uh, we had rain? Last time we had rain, I believe it was March or April. Yeah. Luke, what are yeah. your plans? Before I get to the, the um, what are my plans my 4th of July, um, I have to say that I agree with David. Uh, it will be raining this weekend as well because um, if you check my Savannah weather right now, tomorrow will be thunderstorming outside. Hmm, interesting. It's bad, you know. It's 88 degrees, 72 in the, in the high high crit, you know. And well, the if it's raining and um, if there's going to be rain, you are going to get that thunder. Yeah, 8 percent chance of rain. Pretty. And yes, and uh, Saturday, same thing. Isolated thunderstorm. Fourth of July, mostly probably cloudy. Well. Try to make the best 4th of July you can. Yeah, I had plans that day. One of them had to be uh, my stepdad's birthday on that day. He turned well, 60. Well, happy birthday to your dad, your stepdad. 
He's yeah, he's yeah. which I'm celebrating his stepdad my stepdad's birthday that day, which is gonna be huge. He's gonna be fishing along with um some other things, so we're just gonna do some, some other things when uh I'm not sure what's gonna have for Fourth of July there. We're we'll planning on doing something along with the fireworks at a club nearby my house, but after that, like I normally do, just like I did for two random episodes of Elch and such club vlogs. But you just have to see what's going to happen next in, in Elch and such club vlogs episode 41. But as far as um, um, Saturday goes, I'm maybe shopping to celebrate my stepdad's birthday. Now, with that, I'm going to be shopping for me. To finish off my 26th birthday because it's a uh, one because I haven't done eBay shopping. Two, I have get ready for an update of ScreenFlow because ScreenFlow 10 is already out. And three, I have to update. I have to get some Amazon shopping some more before I see Alex in California. Yep, which we're going to be seeing each other in September of this year. And here is the Surge logo from 1999 to 2003 the logo is pretty cool but i prefer the old late 90s logo from 97 to 99 and then 2014 to the present which logo do you like better luke this one or that one both both gotta pick one luke if you had to pick oh. one. Oh yeah 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 well, I, mean, I like both sure. logos yeah the reason why you said uh you can't like big both logos. I just, I'm a both person. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm a both person too, but if I had to just pick one, I like this one because this represents Surge. What about you, David? Yes. Yeah. I'll have to say the same because, you know, it looks more official. It does. What about you, Christian? I don't know if you ever had Surge, by the way. I haven't had it. Yeah, me either. Cause I'm Kristen? not a search person at all. Christian. Christian. Oh, uh, the first one for sure. The first one for sure. Uh, yeah, I one. agree with you. The first one represents surge. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. anything you guys want to talk about? Like, what's your favorite dish for Fourth of July? Well, um, oh, man, I love these hot dogs my dad makes. See, I like hot dogs and burgers. Those, I, hot dogs and burgers are, and of course, steak. But me, I think burgers and hot dogs are the perfect food for Fourth of July barbecue. Mm -hmm. Because that's old tradition American food right there. Yeah, steak too. Yeah. yeah. And of no, course, uh, and of course, for Thanksgiving, you got the usual and simple Christmas. Every holiday has this foods. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead, Luke. What do you think? What's your favorite food for Fourth of July? Well, for me, um, besides from uh, that, but my stepdad's birthday cake. I love uh, hot dogs, burgers that has to do with the cheese, something like that, and love cheeseburgers. And, and so forth. There, um, there's, there's a lot to choose from. And my stepdad's seafood. I'm well, he's allergic to some seafood. That's what I like. What about you, Christian? Oh, my dad makes these really good hot dogs. Like he grew them and like put this like cool seasoning on them, and they're like really good hot dogs. I like that when I cook steak. hot dogs. My dad can make some really good steak for the first one. Oh, we both talked at the same time, but I was going to say, I like to cook the Nathan's hot dogs. Those are like the best. I used to have like Foster Farm, the ballpark. Now I like Nathan's. Heard. As you heard helicopter in the background. I do not hear the helicopter, but you know what you can also think for me enjoying the Nathan's hot dogs brand? What is it? The hot dog eating contest, which is held at Coney Island Park. Every Fourth of July, where tens of participants, including Joey Jaws Chestnut and Matt Stoney, both from San Jose, compete to see who can eat the most hot dogs in ten minutes to win the twenty thousand dollar grand prize and the mustard belt. 
And I know for sure that Joey Chestnut is going to win it again and possibly break another record. If you all remember from 2015, his winning streak came to a halt when Matt Stoney overtook Joey Chestnut. And when I saw that, I was like, I was really surprised because I didn't expect Matt Stoney to win it. Yeah. Well, um, but when I was see you, you should do on Fourth of July every year. Like I, my, what is your other traditions with you? Huh? I said, what other traditions do you want Fourth of July? Well, what I what else I like to do? You're saying? Yeah, every year. Every year, what I like to do is just just spend time with friends and family. What uh, you should have a party and stuff like that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I will. I mean, I was at a Fourth of July party a couple of years ago in 2019 when I was up at uh, Citrus Heights with Corey. Wow. Uh, but uh, how's he doing, by the way? He's doing good. We're gonna be. I'm gonna be seeing him in the coming days, where he lives in Rockland wow. right now. I know he's in Rockland, which I heard about in the video. Yeah, which we don't need to explain the whole story because. It's nobody's yes. business, but the only thing we'll say is he now <laughs> lives in and he's happy there. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, is there anything else you guys want to talk about? Um, no, I think we talked about everything we talked about, right? I, I, think, well, I guess we're going to say something go on. Yeah, go ahead, Well, well as for uh, me, I just recently did the season three premiere of my Every Dad's Wish to My Car show, new episodes. Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays at 9 8 Central. And I am in the works of rebuilding 300,000 hangouts, uh, which is usually Thursday nights, but I'm, not, I'm on debating if I should do it today. Um, but it's going to be a lot of fun for episode 18, I believe, is the next one. We are going to be talking about the difference between podcasting and entertainment content for 20, 2021. Um, oh, cool. Yes, because two of my friends um, from part of my production staff were talking about this the other day. So we are going to be talking about which is better and our personal thoughts about that. Worse. Yes. Yeah, As since you were talking about a game show, a uh, fan made game show, that is, I've been recently uploading episodes on the 25, which was launched last week. I've been uploading episodes of Million Dollar Sharks, Plinko the Game Show, Bonzi's Jungle Challenge, and of course, the return of Spin for a Million. I want to say thank you all for supporting the very first week of uploads on the 25. We hope you yeah. look forward to our next week, and we will be yeah. doing some content through the end of this year, and then we'll take a little break, and then we'll see how it goes. It could be like what ABC does for their summer fun and games. We don't know. I know that you made a, little, a mistake in the premiere episode intro. Yeah, you know what? You mean like where the Plinko chip is on the wrong side? I'm talking about Bonzi's Chunkle Challenge. Actually. Yeah, I was saying, I, you know, I was trying to say $3,000. I really was. but uh, I, I actually made the intro, like the intro for Bonzi's Chunkle Challenge. Let me, uh, you want me to show you? Just tell me. Uh, it's actually hard uh, to like there's like a clip. Like, hold on, let me go to here. Um, oh, well, hmm, that's kind of weird. I yeah. thought I thought made a mistake there, so I uh, I thought you're talking about when I was trying to say three thousand dollars, I was saying thirty thousand uh, dollars. Yeah. I don't know. It must be my internet or something on my computer. It looks fine on my phone for some reason. Yeah. But I think it's just good. Uh, I, I got. I got it. Yeah, he got it. I got it right here. Awkward moments on the home cooked food cast. Yeah. <laughs> Awkward childhood moments. Wash your brow. My friend. My friend. You know. 
I don't see a mistake so far. What are you talking about? It must have been my computer or, or something because oh, my phone looks completely fine. I don't so. have I don't see any mistakes on the intro of Bonzi's Jungle Challenge. Let me check. You don't have to, Luke. Yeah, because no, 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 we're about we're it's almost time to uh, end the show. No, yes. no, 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 no. Hold on. I was talking about uh, he was talking about something, but uh... but what else is coming up on your main channel? Can I just say uh, uh nothing much really, but uh, I believe that's going to be concluded for this. An episode of the Home Cooked Food Cast. If you like this yeah. episode, give this a thumbs up and consider subscribing to Lennon's Kitchen, where he makes cooking easy and it's the number one food source channel of YouTube. And don't forget to uh... see. Oh, that's Are, link, you? Are you talking about where the position of the chip goes to you know what it still works it still works it's either like, way it kind of yeah, still does so it's not i did react video to it and i'm like what yeah but anyways continue if you like this give us a thumbs up and subscribe to all of our channels including lens kitchen i'm gonna get out here enjoy my fourth of july weekend i will see you all well we will see you all and including myself and lennon on the next edition of the Home Cook Streamcast, but now known as the Home Cook Foodcast. So long, my friends. Bye. Yeah.